quick warning before we start the video. This video contains pictures of skulls, taxidermied animals, wet specimens, that's dead animals in jars, and bugs. You know, just kind of dead animals, you know? Everything is ethically sourced, so don't worry. With that, click away if you don't like, don't leave any rude comments please, and on with the video! Hey guys, Cha-Chan here, and today's video, since it's Halloween tomorrow, I thought we would have a look at my taxidermy collection. So before we get started, I do want to go over a couple of things, and say a couple of things. So first off, none of these animals have been killed for the purpose of taxidermy. Everything is legally obtained, and if you notice this bird skull in the corner here, Bird parts are not illegal to own in the UK, I know they are in America, there's laws and stuff, look into it if you live there. Anyway, everything is legal to own and everything is ethically sourced. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will happily answer them. So yeah, please don't leave any rude comments, and with that said, let's get on with the video! This is a jackdaw skull. It is quite small. I found this jackdaw dead in a local village. It was kind of mummified when I found it, so <laughs> you can see I haven't actually cleaned the skull properly. You should always clean your skulls, I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Um, but yeah, it's a little jackdaw. This is Betty the Badger. She came with the name. I won her on an eBay auction. She came with the rest of her skeleton, I might show that in a little bit, but yeah, she has some really cool coloration on her. She was found dead. Badgers are really cool since they have hinged jaws, so the jaw doesn't really come out unless you really try. <laughs> she has almost all of her teeth. This canine here, sorry it's out of focus, one of the canines is broken but the root is there and we are missing a premolar but aside from that we have all the teeth and I really love this the terminates are intact I love it Betty was actually used in a scouts group I believe or some kind of nature group where they used her for educational purposes but now she's retired so she lives with me well lives after lives you get the idea it's really difficult for me to be able to own more exotic skulls since it's a lot of paperwork and usually they're not in the UK but I'm really lucky to be able to own this Bennett's Wallaby skull. It was probably hunted since it was obtained in 1987 so it's an old specimen but you know I can't help that someone hunted this before I was born you know. <laughs> but yeah this is a Bennett's Wallaby skull they are obviously not from England, they're from Australia. See, it's got all of its turbinates, all of its teeth with some weird gunky build upon them. It has been sealed with something though. I don't know what it's been sealed with, but it's not greasy, so it's fine. It does look like it's greasy, but I assure you it's not. This is a little mink skull that I bought online. It's not much to say about it really cute, got all of its teeth, maybe got a little bit of grease in some areas, so I might have to soak it in peroxide. No turbinates unfortunately, but still a really cute skull. This is a skull that I cleaned myself. This is a rabbit, it was sourced from frozen snake food, so I did not kill it, don't worry. <laughs> but I cleaned it myself using the boiling method. And as you can see, the boiling method does leave grease in the skull because I did not do a peroxide boiling. You should always degrease your skulls to avoid them smelling. This doesn't smell fortunately, 
but I did unfortunately destroy the turbinates and uh, whatever this bit is at the side, I don't know the name of it. <laughs> anyway, it's a really cool skull and later I'll show you the rabbit taxidermied that this skull came from. I actually own two cat skulls, but I'll show you this one for now. This is the first ever expensive skull that I bought. It cost me £45. I mean, that's not terribly priced for a skull, especially one with all of its turbinates. Let me get that in focus. Can you see all those little turbinates in there? Very nice, very pretty. He has all of his teeth. Oh, I forgot his jaw is not hinged, obviously, because he's a cat. But you can see he's got all of his teeth. He's not greasy. He's got this nice kind of greyish colour to him. He was found dead, obviously. He's from Scotland, that's all I know. I bought him from the site Pretty Dead Taxidermy, I believe. I'll leave a link in the description to where I bought this skull. Obviously they don't always have these in stock, but they do have a ton of other things like insects and other skulls and taxidermy, so go and check them out. I really love this skull. It's a fox skull, just a red fox, but it's got an undershot jaw. So as you can see his teeth kind of jut out and it's really cool. He doesn't have any turbinates, but he's grease free and he's very pretty. I just love that undershot jaw. And it actually meant he was a bit cheaper because of it, since most people apparently want a more perfect skull. I love when skulls have kind of anomalies or deformities. It makes them look really unique and cool. Not nice for when the animal was alive, but it still looks nice when it's, you know, skullified. <laughs> Probably my tiniest skull. Well, that's a lie actually. The tiniest one's a mouse. <laughs> But, one of the tiniest skulls, it's a bat. Now this one does not need a license, you need a license to hold bats in the UK. This one does not need a license as it's a fruit bat from Indonesia, I think? Probably Indonesia. It was a Christmas present from my mum and it's so cute, it's so cute, look at his little teeth. A little heart shaped nose, it's so cute, I love it. Now I did mention I have a mouse skull. This is the mouse skull. I found it when I was in primary school, in reception I think. So that's when I was about five. Yeah, I was about five. So technically this is the first thing I ever found. And this is my duck skull, which is technically the first thing I ever ordered online. It's just a regular duck skull. <laughs> and then we've got some vertebrae here, some snake skin and feathers. Also some, some ornaments. I used to collect ornaments when I was younger. I don't really now, but I keep a few. I also have a seahorse here. The laws on seahorses have changed, but this was obtained before those laws came in. It's an old one, so, you know, it's perfectly fine to own. I also have some shark teeth here. <laughs> I have a few little crabs lying around. I have a bunch of tiny ones that I need to list on Etsy or Instagram or something. But anyway, this one came from Scotland. It's missing a couple of legs and his eyes, I think. <laughs> no, his eyes are still there. His eyes are still there. He's really cute. He's purple. I love him. Now, this is one of the only pieces of taxidermy that was done by someone else that I own. Taxidermy is expensive, so I don't really get the chance to buy it. This was a Christmas present from my mum. It is a cockatiel, and I call him Pikachu because of the red cheeks. He's so cute. He was done by Moth Studios, and it's so good. Like, it's so good, I love it. He's mounted on a tall stand, and I don't have much to say about him, I just love him. He's so cute. Look at that little face. Look at it. I love it. This is the messiest shelf but it's full of taxidermy and oddities, so I'll try and go through some of them. This is the second cat skull that I own. His name is Zal, which stands for Zombie Carl. <laughs> Me and my friend named him, and he was a birthday gift from my friend. I'll leave a link to their Instagram in the description. Please go and check them out. They have amazing art. And thank you. <laughs> Just look at him, he's so cute. 
I mean, maybe slightly scary, but also really cute. He's got some turbinates left. It's a bit dark in here, so you can't really see them. Also, I have to focus. He's got all of his teeth, and he's got little premolars there. Can you see he's got two premolars, which means he was quite young. He was a teenager, I guess. <laughs> And I love how he has his little vertebrae here, he's got his cervical vertebrae and a couple of little uh, ribs there. But I do have some background on this skull. He comes from Essex in England, obviously. I live in England. <laughs> and he was used in the science department of a school. The school recently closed down and they were selling off a bunch of their uh, science things. <laughs> So I found this on eBay and my friend was like, I'm gonna buy it for you and I was like, no, do not! But uh, yeah, that's how I got this little skull and he's so cute and I love him. This is a deer skull, I'm not sure what type of deer, but I found it at the side of the road, just like it is. And I do have a bit of a story about this skull, not a long one, don't worry. So I found a dead badger at the side of the road. But it was too stinky to keep in the car all the way home. <laughs> so we dumped the badger in a little junction with some trees and stuff. Went back a few months later and it was gone, so that was really sad. But this was there in its place, so it was kind of a nice trade-off. Though the badger, I miss the badger. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really nice skull. It's obviously not in the best of conditions, but I don't mind that. I like when skulls are kind of unique and different. It's got intact turbinates. Well, sort of intact. <laughs> and we turn him over and it's so pretty. It's a young male. At least I think. <laughs> but I know it's a male. Think it's young. Not entirely sure. Either he just shed his antlers or they were just growing through. I don't know how to tell. Now, you wouldn't be able to tell this was a fox if you weren't in the into taxidermy. I had to get some help to identify it. I wasn't entirely sure if it was a fox or a deer, but it looks like a young fox. I call him Jacob. He is missing his entire face. <laughs> and I found him in Hamsley Forest, which is a forest near where I live, and he is very pretty. He's obviously not in the best of condition. I found him like this, and he's so fragile, so I'm gonna put him back before I break him. I seem to have quite a lot of bird feet that I've just kind of stashed up, but these are some of the first that I got. This was a Christmas present, again, from my mum a few years back. They are moorhen feet, and they're so big, they're so long. Hey, look at those. Hey, look at those, they're so long. It's spiky. I love them. Also, they've got that little red accent up here. It's not blood, it is the skin colour. I love them. Now, you can kind of see that this has a lot of white powder on it. It's borax from when I was drying it. This is a rook head. It's very cool. It's quite big as well. It's not heavy, it's quite light. It's just mummified. I need to brush out the rest of this borax. But anyway, yeah, it's really soft and I love it. I quite like these. These are some mummified frogs, a bit squished, they were run over by cars in a car park, but they are kind of cool. Here's something else I feel quite lucky to be able to own, it is a raccoon face pelt. We don't have raccoons in England, but they do have them in other countries in Europe, and obviously in America, but we don't have them in England, so this was really cool for me <laughs> to be able to own. I found it on Etsy. It's just a craft grade one. He's really cool even though he's craft grade. He does have a little hole in his face there, that's not his eye. <laughs> and he's got little whiskers and his little nose. He's so cute and really soft, I love him. He's professionally tanned as well. More stuff I did myself. This is a squirrel tail mummified, so it's stiff. And a mummified squirrel paw. Very small, very cute. This is a taxidermy rat that I did myself. As you can tell, it's not very good. I have improved since I did this, but we call him the handsome man. <laughs> uh, he is not very good. I mean, he's not terrible, but he is slightly terrifying. He's got a very obvious seam line, and his tail wasn't skinned the way it's supposed to be skinned. 
Uh, as you can see, there's a big seam line down his tail. That's just... I, I, I'm terrible at skinning rat's tails. And I'm terrible at skinning... Ooh! I'm terrible at... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Handsome Man. There you go. There. <laughs> I'm terrible at skinning tails. I guess that was him throwing a little temper tantrum at how I didn't do a good job on him. <laughs> uh, his eyes are... Were these glass eyes? Yeah, these are glass eyes. Sometimes I use buttons for eyes instead, like domed buttons, not just the flat ones. That would be terrifying. <laughs> anyway, that's the handsome man. These are a fox face pelt with ears and tail. It's really soft. And these were given to me by someone in my art class. Well, I used to go to art class, I am finished college now. But anyway, uh, someone had only needed the body of the pelt, and they'd had these lying around the house for ages and just said to me, do you want them? And I was like, sure. And I was like, really shocked. I just didn't expect to get free stuff. I was like, do you want paying for them? And he was like, nah, just take them. So <laughs> thank you if you are watching this, thank you so much. I love them. They're so soft and they're so pretty. Like, look at those colours. Not much to say about these. These are mink tails. They're really soft, really fluffy. And here we have a tiny little taxidermy duckling. Really soft, really lightweight as well. Taxidermy is always, well, generally is really lightweight as well. Um, but yeah, this is a Christmas present again from my mum. <laughs> Uh, obviously all these Christmas presents were spaced out over a few years. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure which seller made this particular taxidermy, but it's from Etsy. It's so cute, it's so soft. Now these are two of my little insect mounts, or arachnid mounts. Um, this was the first winged insect I did, and this was the first ever insect, or rather arachnid mount I did. I'm just going to call the scorpions insect mounts because same kind of category, you know? I know full well that they're arachnids, so please don't be like on my case in the comments. I do know what they are. So um, yeah, this is the first ever insect mount that I did, and I think it turned out alright for my first ever attempt. Really tiny. Uh, these little scorpions, I believe I bought this one from Ossiflorus on Etsy. I'll leave a link to her store in the description, so please go and check her out. She also posts on Instagram and she makes some really cool things. This is a... Ooh, he's a bit spinny on his pin. <laughs> uh, this is a lantern bug, I believe. He looks like a little elephant. I call him Ellie. And it's so cute. Look at that little face. It's so cute. First ever winged insect I did. Uh, he already had that hole in his wing. I didn't do that. <laughs> but then... Um, yeah, I, I struggled quite a bit with that uh, since then. It's been a, a couple of years since then, and I haven't actually mounted any more insects in a while, at least non-winged. I've done more arachnids, like uh, I did a tarantula and a big scorpion, and um, yeah, I need to get back into insect mounting. Now, I'm not going to pick everything out of this box, as I still need to disinfect them. <laughs> But in this box we have a crow, or actually that might be a magpie, uh, I can't remember. Anyway, we have a corvid skull, what I think is a cow bone, it's a cow bone of some kind. Uh, then we have a fish skull, not sure what kind of fish it is, and I do have the rest of it, but it's still cleaning, or rather I just, it was a mess, I didn't know what to do with it, so yeah I have the rest of it in a box somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get around to arranging it and st sticking it together someday. Then we have a couple of bird skulls that I can't remember what bird they're from and the big one is a seagull. So that's the uh, needs cleaning box. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through everything on this shelf in detail, it's mostly just mice and jazz. <laughs> little baby rat over there I think, yeah. And this, this one's preserved properly, but it still lost its colour. This is a pheasant heart, male pheasant heart. It used to be bright red, but ever since putting it in the alcohol, it has lost its colour. But it is correctly preserved, I believe. <laughs> anyway, and here we have who I call Vladimir. 
He's a little mouse. The first ever taxidermy I did, he's stuffed with toy stuffing, so that's kind of strange. <laughs> but he's, he's kind of cute. And uh, here's a skinned rat tail from the, the handsome man that I showed you earlier. I also have a bunch of like random bones. That's a rabbit heart and eyes in a jar. Uh, oh, that's a, a rat heart in there. That's preserved in formaldehyde and it's sealed with wax. Um, there's some rabbit bones, crab claws, you know, just oh, bird feet as well. And on the next shelf down, amongst the <laughs> random bird feet and the bones, we have some cartoon figures. I also have like a, a bunch of uh, cartoon <laughs> figures <laughs> amongst all of the, the bones, you know, we just. So you got all of your PJ masks and your Pikachu and suddenly there's a bone. <laughs> yeah. And down here we have a silver foxtail. It's really cool, really soft and fluffy. And this came from White Rabbit Taxidermy on Etsy. I'll leave a link to their shop in the description too. They sell all kinds of things. They get some exotic things in as well, so keep an eye out. These are some butterflies that I bought when I was very little. I don't know how old I was, like, very little. <laughs> I don't know where I bought them. I know it was a charity shop, but I don't know which town, city, whatever, village. <laughs> but they are quite nice. In here we have a sugar glider. It's another specimen that I'm very excited that I own. This is a male sugar glider. Ignore the fact that there's a little pebble in there. I originally put it in because there was so much air in his fur that he was floating. He is correctly preserved, professionally preserved in formaldehyde and he is now in isopropyl alcohol. I think it could do with the change, it's going a bit yellow. <laughs> but he is correctly preserved and he's so cute. This is one of my favourite wet specimens. It is a little kitten. I know it's, it's kind of morbid, but this kitten was a stillborn I believe. I bought it from a seller on Instagram whose account is no longer available since I believe she sold everything she had to sell and decided to close her Instagram. But uh, yeah, it's ethically sourced, born, dead. So it is sad, but it is very cute. Like, look at that little face, and look, look at those little paws, little, little claws. Very cute. Sad, but cute. And this is a young deer skull. Uh, not sure which specific type of deer it is, I'm not up to date on what kind of deer everything uh, is. Anyway, uh, this was bought in an antique shop. I'm not sure when it was deceased, <laughs> uh, but I believe it is a hunting trophy. Well, it's definitely a hunting trophy based on how it's prepared. But um, I do have a video explaining my views on hunting, so please go and watch that. There's I'll leave the link to the playlist at the end of this video. I have a taxidermy playlist. A bit too big to fit on my uh, little makeshift backdrop there, but uh, this is a magpie skin. I skinned it myself and unfortunately a bunch of the feathers fell out. So <laughs> instead of letting it go to waste, I decided to dry it. It's not tanned, just dried. and. Um, He's a bit dusty, I need to give him a dust. <laughs> but um, yeah, magpie. Also a bit too big for my makeshift backdrop is this deer skull. Yet again, a hunting trophy. Uh, yet again, there's a link to my video in the playlist at the end of the video explaining, explaining my views. Anyway, um, I'm not sure what kind of deer this is. I thought it was a muntjack, but someone on Instagram said that it probably wasn't. I thought it was based on how the horns are, you know, they're quite long and, you know, uh, they said it was probably a red deer or something. I can't remember what they said, but, um, yeah, if you know what this is, let me know in the comments or if you have any ideas. Uh, this was bought at the same antique shop as this one over here, and, um, yeah, it's probably from the same person. Not much information on it. It's very nice. I like it. This is the insect box, and uh, I thought it was nice and gothic, so I decided to use it. 
We have crab claws, more of the frogs over there. Is magnets, so not taxidermy in there. But yeah, but yeah, let's get these out and have a look. In here we have a bunch of dead insects that I found. These were all found dead. I do not kill any insects for this. It's just everything's found as it is. We have a little ladybird over here, which really should. And here's the other box that's filled with insects. Everything was found dead yet again. It's a little bit chaotic in there. And I have another little box in my bag that I carry with me. When I find dead insects, I put them in there. And that is currently full as well, so I really need to do something with these. This is an alligator head. It's quite small, like, what is that, like, four or five inches or something? Maybe about four inches, three and a half, I don't know. Anyway, it's quite small. Uh, I wrote on the back it's an alligator so I could, you know, not mistake it for a crocodile or anything. I love its little teeth, it's so cute. But uh, yeah, alligator heads are quite expensive to get in the UK. I got this one for about 20 pounds, which is quite cheap for, you know, one in the UK. <laughs> it's quite old, I found it at an antique shop. I love it. This is a camel's rib. Uh, what is it? A drogidemi I can't say the word. A drogidemi ribi camel. See, I can't say it. But anyway, it's quite big. I found this on eBay. It doesn't need any paperwork, so it's legal to own. And um, yeah, it's just a nice camel rib. <laughs> and over in the corner here, I have a Highland cow horn some cow vertebrae, as well as my sword. I have a sword. <laughs> I got this sword at a car boot sale for four pounds. And um, yeah, I quite like it. Oh, that reminds me, I have a, another taxidermy rabbit over here. This was the first rabbit I ever did. I think it turned out really cute. She's stuffed with bubble wrap, but <laughs> creepy. This is Betty's box. <laughs> As you can see, she came with the name, and uh, she was sent in this box. Everything's in wrapping, so I'm not going to get everything out, but just to give you an idea. I have organised her, so I could put her together if I wanted to. Here we have pelvis and uh, leg bones, back legs I think. A couple of little, um, couple of little vertebrae, tail vertebrae thing in there. Uh, various small bones, oh ribs. Those are ribs. I organised her spine in art class one time and then I never used it in art. But uh, yeah, this is Betty's spine. So yeah, that, that's Betty's skeleton. I also store a lot of things under my bed because my room is quite small and I do intend to display these at some point when I get my room sorted and put some hooks in the walls and all of that kind of stuff. So I have a bunch of bird wings under my bed. Uh, here's some pigeon wings and some crow wings. I have a bunch of crow wings, I uh, need to sell some of them, so look out, I might be able to part with some of them. So, um, yeah. These were the first pelts that I tanned myself. Uh, they aren't pretty, but, you know, they did turn out alright. I mean, um, the rabbit, his feet are still in there, so they're solid. You're meant to skin rabbits down to the... Ooh, you did you hear that? <laughs> You're meant to skin rabbits down to the last toe, and I obviously did not. I didn't really know that when I was doing this rabbit. Uh, yeah, he's really soft. He was again snake food, so was this little rat. I do like the rat, it, it's cute. And this was a wild rabbit that I found. Um, his skeleton is macerating, so I should probably do something about that, but he's so soft. He's got his winter coat as well. Um, I couldn't save the rest of his pelt, it had a big hole in it where the where the crows had been eating. But um, yeah, he's really soft and I do like him. This is a fox pelt and I did this one myself, it needs a lot more work as you can see it's quite stiff. Uh, she is missing her tail, there's a bit of a story behind that. I think I, ta I, think I talked about it in a taxidermy talk. But yeah, I found this box. It's a young juvenile female. I'm 
we found her at the side of the road, but before, like 30 seconds before we picked her up, another car pulled up and cut her tail off and drove away. So I still picked her up because she's still really nice. She's got a winter coat, all fluffy. I love it. It's really soft. But uh, yeah, she needs a lot more work. I also kept her paws intact as much as I could. I mean it's really difficult to... Oh that reminds me of a story about this. So this fox has on one leg, and we get this one, if you can see that, this foot was infected and um, when I was skinning the feet I cut myself with the scalpel <laughs> and it had to be on the infected part didn't it? So um, yeah, I had to go to hospital and get a whole like injection. <laughs> it, it wasn't fun. We're at the doorway to my room right now because this pelt is quite big. This is a deer pelt. It's got his little tail. <laughs> um, I bought this at an antique shop, one of my favourite shops actually, um, and I love it. It's it's quite old. This cost me £25, so it wasn't too expensive. It's quite old, nicely tanned, nice and soft underneath. That's really soft. And then, um, yeah, that's it. It's a deer pelt. Oh, we're out of focus. These are two mink scarf things. Like, they go over your shoulders and they look nice, I guess. Or they used to. <laughs> Fashions have changed. They're both minks. Well, this one is like five minks I think, like five or six mink. Minks? What's the plural of mink? Anyway, and this is just one. No, sorry, this is two. This is two sewn together so it's nice and long. Uh, this one was bought in an antique shop. He's got a, um, an interesting face and uh, his feet are a little bit uh, mangled, but he does have a nice fluffy tail. Very nice fluffy tail. This one I bought at a car boot sale, and it was £10 I think, yeah. And he's got all those little toe beans, it's so cute. Uh, it's a bit more coarse and rough than the other one, but it's still a really nice pelt. Pelts, uh, plural. Anyway, I like it. They hang on my doorknob to my room. <laughs> so I to keep them. It's Halloween, I should show my Halloween decorations. This is an all year round bat. He just stays on my door and looks nice. <laughs> I am not going to get all of this out because this was my A-level art, my final exam and stuff. So I'm going to do an entire video just on this stuff. So keep an eye out for that. There will also be some uh, interesting taxes on me in that, which I'm not going to show in this video as it's, you know, it's gonna be a lengthy video as is. Anyway, let's get on with some other stuff. These pelts have just come out of tanning the other week, actually. <laughs> they need a bath, so I need to get on and do that. This was a roadkill rabbit. Um, it had fleas when I first got it, so it scratched itself raw in a couple of places. It did not slip when tanning, it just has patches missing. It is very soft, though. And uh, this is a pheasant, also roadkill. Um, I was going to taxidermy it, but the, it had been eaten a bit by some crows <laughs> by the time I'd gotten to it and I hadn't realised. Um, yeah, so it, it's nice. It's a nice pelt. And over on here we have some experiments. These were chicks that I was skinning for my exam that went not brilliantly. What happened was they would rip when I was pulling the skull through the neck and I couldn't use them anymore, so... I decided I would chuck them in the tanning bin to see what would happen. And you know, they turned up. They turned out. Well, I'll say that. This one I accidentally ripped when I was trying to stretch it, so um, yeah. And this is a blackbird skin that I also ripped when I was trying to stretch it. Uh, I also discovered that I'd chucked its head in there as well. I don't remember chucking the head into the bin, but isn't the, the tanning bin full of water and tanning solution? <laughs> I don't remember putting that in there, but it was in there. Anyway, so that is the pelt that I've just finished tanning. It's 
sorry for the background noise, the washing machine is on. <laughs> anyway, I actually just got this out of the Borax the other week. This, I love this, is one of my best finds. It is a stingray tail, not a stingray, a spiny ray tail. Not very common to find washed up, I guess, at least not where I live. I don't live next to the seaside, I, you know, went there on a day out. <laughs> Look at those spikes. Look how spiky it is. Ignore the fact it's covered in borax. I need to brush it all off and I'm scared to touch this thing. Look how spiky it is. Look, it's lethal. So, um, yeah, I, I love it. It's spiky and uh, I'm scared to touch it. <laughs> on the kitchen table until I find a, a home for these. <laughs> these are what I made for my final art exam in college. So yeah, I'm finished college now. <laughs> yeah, these were my, these are my current best taxidermies. I mean, they're not brilliant. You can see these chicks have quite a bit of a, they needed some washing and I didn't have time because, you know, it's an exam. But uh, they are kind of cute, unfortunately. They got packed away into a box before they could finish setting, so the feet have all been a bit um, destroyed. <laughs> so that's kind of sad, but I will rehydrate them and fix that up. But look at that, that's really cute, I think. I think this is some of my best taxidermy yet. I'm still improving, I'm still quite a beginner. <laughs> and this, this rabbit, is the one that we saw the skull from earlier, I think? Or was that the pelt? Hmm, I can't remember now. <laughs> anyway, this is a rabbit. It's very soft and it's nice. <laughs> this one's actually stuffed with bubble wrap. <laughs> Crinkly. So, um, yeah, the chicks were stuffed with floral foam. I know these are not the right materials to use for taxidermy, but I was in a rush, I didn't have the materials, I didn't have time to order them. <laughs> and the squirrel, the squirrel doesn't stand by himself, he needs to be supported. <laughs> His tail got a bit messed up when he got put away to into storage until I could collect him. But um, I do like my squirrel, he is stuffed with floral foam again. Head is floral foam with I think some milliput maybe, I'm not sure. Um, the chicks have milliput in the head to keep the eyes in, but the skull is in there as well, obviously. Except this one, which um, I had to make the skull out of um, floral foam. <laughs> yep. Don't use floral foam for taxidermy, it's not good. So yeah, these are my um, best yet taxidermies. <laughs> All a bit um, unnerving, shall we say. <laughs> so that is the end of my taxidermy tour. I guess. So this is a Halloween kind of video since it's all a bit spooky. <laughs> I didn't show everything. I do have a lot of like little bits lying around that I'm intending to use for crafting things and selling things. But overall, that was the main majority of my collection <laughs> so far. I did miss things in my A-level art stuff. But I will make a video on those later. These You'll see these again in that video. But there's also going to be a tarantula and a scorpion and more squirrels and all kinds of things. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Links to all of my social medias are in the description. If you have any questions about this in general, just leave them in the comments and I will happily reply. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and bye! Oh, and happy Halloween!